Conan ventures out on his own to face his destiny. Naught but the symbol of the serpent to find his target. Soon he comes across a band of the children of doom. Those who are under the spell of the snake lord. Those who have become weakened and pacifists. The willing slave to their warlock overlord. They told him to give up his sword and return to the earth to give up his own will, his own power, and become in unity with the earth, like them, to blindly follow the naive path of docility. Do you see a resemblance between the followers of doom and a real-life phenomena? And their name is no coincidence, either. Their minds have been poisoned by notions of pacifism and universalism, practicing aesthetic and mystical practices to weaken both their minds and their body in order to improve their so-called spirit. All in while, they are but mere tools for the dark sorcerer. Conan arrives at the commune Surrounded by the cult members in white robes, he devises a plan to infiltrate them. He finds a priest who is sexually corrupt and lures him away, battering him and taking his robes. We see the twin serpent with the eyes in many places during this film. An unmistakable symbol within our own realm, once again pointing to the true meaning of who this group is. The Brotherhood of the Snake, the mystery schools of our own world. Conan clearly sticks out amongst the emaciated pacifist and is soon discovered by Doom's underlings. He is taken to Doom, and there Doom explains to Conan his answer to the riddle of steel, that flesh is mightier than steel, that his will, his vril, his occult power to make the young girl jump to her death is more powerful than any steel could ever be. And he, of course, is right. The will, the mind, is more powerful than matter. This is what the dark occult practitioners understand to use for their own gain, their will over matter, and to transmute others' will into mere matter, to take these young men and women and turn them into bricks for them to use as building material for their own desires. Conan is to contemplate his insolence on the tree of woe by virtue of crucifixion. This crucifixion is the bridge between Conan, the mere mortal, and Conan, the legend, the hero, the myth. It is here where the hero undergoes such suffering that he is transformed from the mere flesh-bound man to something much more. It goes not only to Jesus, but to Odin, where he was hung on the world tree to receive the knowledge of the runes. It is this mystical transfiguration that is so integral to the hero's journey that we ourselves must embrace our own crucifixions in this realm. The crucifixion is given to somebody who is often an outsider or a social pariah, somebody who has upset the social order. And in our own world, we will face social and spiritual crucifixions within our own life's journey. And we must embrace these knowing that we will become more powerful once we come through it. And overcome it. Though Conan 
the hero who embodies the truest form of will itself, defies the crucifixion. He kills a vulture while being packed alive, whilst others would have simply crumbled and accepted their fate. Conan fights back with every drop of will he has. No matter what hand you were drawn in this life, you can always fight back. Subadai comes to save Conan after many days, for there are some troubles in this life that only a friend can save you from. In order to bring Conan back from the other world, payment is required, as only life can pay for life, and Valeria agrees to give such payment. Conan is painted with runes to aid his revival. His body is tied to the earth. His soul is tied to his body. And the wizard succeeds in keeping Conan's soul bound to this realm. He fights off the spirits who come to take his soul away. Conan arises, sword in hand, his will, his mission, revived along with his body, and now his purpose is more clear than ever. He must kill Tulsa Doom and end the snake cult. They descend into the underground caves where the cult operates. It's an underground facility, and there we see the process of human bodies butchered in an obvious matter to be used and procured for food. The snake cult that on the surface seems to be preaching pacifism and love is light is in reality below the surface a cannibal cult sacrificing and eating the flesh of other humans and only a stone throws away from where the human bodies are being processed the pleasure palace is there where the bodies of young women are used for the enjoyment of these dark occult practitioners if you look closely you can see that the priestess is eating a hand the broth is made from the flesh of humans. Doom now shifts into his snake reptilian form. Is this his original state? Or a form that he has developed through his dark magic? No one can be sure. But obviously, there have been those who have questioned the true nature of these dark occult practitioners in our own realm. Sensing something is amiss, Doom reverts to his snake form and leaves paradise. Conan and the others slaughter Doom's minions. Though Valeria is killed by Doom with a snake arrow, but she knew it was her time. She made the bargain with the gods to save Conan's life. They burn her body and begin preparation for the battle at the ruins. Conan prays to Krom for revenge, stating that two will stand against many. They will slaughter Doom's men, no matter what his will will be answered or he will die at a critical moment in the battle valeria returns from valhalla as a valkyrie to save conan and ask once more if he wants to live forever doom escapes to his stronghold and there gives a speech regarding the eye of set and the cleansing that must take place in his realm the day of doom when Conan arrives, he confronts Doom. Then Tulsa Doom states that he is in fact Conan's father. 
not his biological father, obviously, but his metaphysical father. Without Doom, Conan would have not his will, his strength, or even his life. All of it comes from the actions of Doom. Without him, Conan would have had nothing. Conan rejects this and decapitates the occultist, showing that he and he alone is the master of his own will. It springs not from another, but his own actions, drives, and desires. It was them that brought him to his destination, and no one else. With Tulsa Doom being dead, his spell breaks, and the cult soon dissipates. The head of the snake destroyed, the body no longer functions, and now the temple is set in flame. What is Conan the Barbarian? A mere action flick? No. It is a Nietzschean tale of one man's overcoming all with naught but his own will. A man who faces a snake cult, who has brainwashed the masses into becoming pacifistic New Agers and degenerates. This man finds the leader and decapitates him, freeing the land. It's a tale of will and a metaphor of the own metaphysical battle that takes place within our own realm.